Hello guys, so it's uh, the most fun time of the month, so new changes incoming. But first, before we go into the new changes, we should talk about the previous changes, because we, I want to show you how Meta got impacted, like always, and then let's talk how might be impacted in the future. Because first thing that I noticed, and I actually had the same feeling at first, people are overreacting. I noticed it's a trend, it happened in every balance council. Yes, some things are broken, some things are questionable, but usually the general rule is that people over-exaggerate the problem. Uh, or uh, like exaggerating in general. So if we, I maybe I'm, I can go into uh, statistics, but I did that in the previous video when I talked about what I'm gonna vote for. And if you remember that, we didn't even have anything super broken. If you check the previous meta, it was actually quite balanced. It's like, it's not bad. There were some decks that were better, especially Syndicate and Monsters, but it wasn't like the, you know, 65% win rate against like 50 from other, uh, other factions. And what happened in this? So the biggest winners, I think, were Gernikora because uh, it got changed here a little bit with Eteral as well. But in general, the uh, the deck got introduced because others were nerfed. And the second biggest winner were, was uh, Syndicate, with both Hidden Cash and Jackpot got nerfed, and also both uh, Finners. The very f interesting thing is that Coral and Skirmisher unlocked a lot of decks, and it was super obnoxious for a month to face it uh, when they went especially first, because you couldn't catch up with them. But the thing is that they didn't influence the data that badly. Skellige was in a fine place uh, mm, win rate wise. So I think the changes were not that problematic as it seems, though I do agree that Coral should uh, be nerfed. Uh, and looking at other uh, other cards, I know that uh, Immortal Cavalry, Cavalry were um, tried. I personally had a deck with them and uh, they were pretty decent. I know that some people on Reddit got to pro rank with that deck. But other than this, we didn't get really that many out of this change. Like, uh, if you go to the power, Philavandru didn't change that much. Eskel Lumber still not seeing play. The uh, hand buff package didn't see that much play uh, like it. Dan Banner got a little bit uh, played as well. Uh, Wizards and uh, and 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 uh, Mage and I didn't see that play that much play. Geralt Quen is a nice uh, like a healthy surprise. I would be maybe not a surprise, but it was healthy and it worked as intended. And and that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm surprised that Dennis, oops, Dennis and Frenzy Dao made actually people move away from that Scoyatel deck, that like a Mahakam Forge Scoyatel deck. I do believe it's still decent. I think it was very good. It was very good against NR, and NR, NR fell a little bit, and that's why it felt at least as well a little bit. But overall, I think that deck is uh, still pretty good. So now let's go to the current deck and uh, current changes and let's see what might happen. So this is the current changes. And let's go from start to the end because it's gonna be easier that way. So first of all, Yaga. Yaga doesn't... Mm, this card is garbage. Like, I don't... This is to power in theory is a little bit better because it's easier to obtain Sabbath. But this card is just bad. Like, fundamentally bad. It has to be like... 5 power and 10 provision to be good, but then it's broken. Like, this card, in my opinion, is beyond saving, and it, this doesn't matter. Cave Troll is back. To be honest, it's whatever. It's, like, people stopped playing Sabbath, but mostly because Monster has so many good decks that people just went into Gernikora, Deathwish, and uh, uh, some Relicts and stuff, and uh, Koshe. So, yeah, it is a little bit better, like, got better, and Monsters is in generally better, so it's not need it wasn't needed to nerf it, it's not needed to buff it, it's like, okay, well, it's, it's a plus for uh, Monsters. Sausage Maker is actually pretty cool, because now no longer it can be killed by 
Rebuke. It's basically a Rebuke-like card, so 5 uh, removal. So basically it's like a Phoenix for Syndicate that's better. I think people are sleeping on this card uh, because it's an engine that can be carry over points. It, I think it's a pretty cool card and you can play it in some crime decks. Uh, the problem is that usually you don't have space for it and you kind of don't care about carryover. But I think the card is not bad. It's, re it's really not bad. Especially with the change to Mahakam uh, Volunt... Uh, no, not sorry. Injustice uh, got changed like last uh, change, I think. So now you have a dwarf on your on your board that you can use for thinners. So maybe, maybe. Vincent Mace at free power. This is a tech choice. It's a tech choice that could, didn't invent C play in when the all groids were a lot present, a lot of the ladder, and it's like the best card pretty much against Ogroids. So. I don't think one power change much. It's the tech choice that you can play or not. Nausicaa Serge uh, Sergeant and Slave Drivers got changed again. And while at first when they got first changed to like five uh, to three power and two power, the Nilfgaard wasn't that uh, oppressive in terms of win rate. And I don't think this like a lot of people will play it. Don't get me wrong. Every single Nilfgaard deck will be playing it. The whole Nilfgaard deck will will have around 50% win rate. The number of people playing Nilfgaard will rise because people love Nilfgaard. And like, in the end, I don't really care. Well, my problem with this change is that it's so uninspiring, you know? It's like so boring. Like we have so many cards that we can change and I'm not saying like that needs to be nerfed or that has to be buffed, but I want to see different cards being changed, so we have fun meta every time. Even if it's broken meta, I don't mind it for one month, because it's gonna be fun and new. But this, this is just making it again the same. And I promise you, we're gonna see those cards nerfed next season. So it's gonna be like, two to five cards will be buffed and nerfed every season and we cannot escape it. And we just cannot escape it. Whatever I would say to you, whatever some other people will tell you, it's an unwittable. It's like Thanos. <laughs> you know, we will see it. And I'm sad about it. I would rather see some super fun changes, like, I don't know, Johnny, or uh, mm, like, I like Mutant, spoiler alert, because they are like new, no one played them, and I, I like those cards. But those are like probably fine win rate wise, but just boring. Bear Witcher is a card that didn't need a buff and got one. This card is like pretty good now, I have to say. It's very, it's actually very good because it's uh, often nine for five. Yeah, it, it, with the damage, it's it's pretty good, and also it's super good with Quen that got better. And I played Witcher. Skellige like two seasons ago and they were pretty decent like a deck that you can climb to pro rank easily now they got changed last season and this season and uh, if you find a good deck with like proactive spells uh, proactive cards with there in it it's gonna be a pretty good deck and I even like 2.5 k MMR good deck uh, Drummond Queensguard is actually one change that I really like I was voting for it and I do like it it's like a Revenants for Skellige now, and uh, it's harder to proc them, but you get more benefit, so you can get like a three points per turn because you have to damage yourself by two, so it's kind of five power. It's 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 pretty cool. I like it, and it's gonna open a door that was closed for a long time, so it's new, and I like it. And you will now consider more often to play series in the range row just to get Drummond Queensguard. And also it means that we can maybe have a different way to look at self-damage. So I like it. That's a, that's a change I like. Redanian Archer, that's interesting. Maybe there can be a mobilization deck that runs those instead of like River Hunters. Because they are kind of River Hunters now. But kind of easier to get rid of. But they are not bad actually. Uh, so yeah, maybe we'll see play. Uh, and Mutant, I like it. It's fun and it's cool. And I played a tiny bit of Self Poison like half a year ago and it was actually surprisingly uh, decent. 
and this is nice change that will make it a tiny bit better. I'm happy to, I can't wait to actually play the Mutant deck, it would be cool. Dana, yes, good, this uh, Dana is just so obnoxious, you just have to answer it immediately in round one, it's just very annoying. I would love to also nerf the second stage, but it's impossible, uh, but this card is obnoxious. Kraken, I'm really happy about this change, a lot of people tell me I should... I should make a separate video about this card because I'm so surprised that people say that this is actually a nerf. It's not a nerf. And people tell me that you should... It's a nerf because you anyway kill it with Blaze of Glory and so you get less points on your side of the board. That's horrible. If you use Blaze of Glory to kill Kraken, it's an absolutely huge waste of leader ability. You really don't want to do it. I think it would be the best if Kraken would be like free power, so Skellige Storm can kill it on its own. It's like you don't want to waste big resources to kill this guy. You want to kill it with random pinging and random damage, so you use as few resources to get it on your side of the board. You don't want to use Blaze of Glory on this. You want to do tiny damage and have it on your board. People that tell me Blaze of Glory is using this. Have you seen the Blaze of Glory that used it? And people like tell me like this is a this is a nerf, and tell me what pro, what good deck plays actually Kraken? Like not a single one. And this unlocks it to be used in more vari variety of decks. I still think this card is still not that good, but if we get to like four or maybe even three, this card would be very good. And then it's cool, because the power of it is uh, comes from movement and storm, and then the ability to, out of this random damage, generate even more points on your side of the board. But not as a combo tool with Blaze of Glory. You don't want to waste Blaze of Glory like this. Then Regis Bloodless, it makes sense. It makes the monster decks a little bit worse, but it's still a big point slam. So I think it has to be like 15 to be... Uh, like finally nerfed. Araga's Queen, understandable nerf. This card seem play in pretty much every single, uh, maybe not every single, but a lot of uh, monster decks. It got tiny bit worse, but to be honest, it doesn't matter that much because you anyway consume a unit at the start, so you are tall enough to not die anyway. Ivar got changed, which is a, mm, in theory, Nerf, but it's also a buff depending on how you look at it. It's uh, a buff when you play it early, it's a nerf when you play it later. But usually you want to play it uh, early, so it's most of the time it's, uh, it's a buff. Coral, understandable, I like it at 6 power. I think we shouldn't touch it at 6 power. I think it's perfect spot for Coral. 7 is just too good. Fredzi Dao, I don't know why people hate this card so much, I think it's fine. I don't see it much often now. But it's fair, at, at 5 power it's still okay. Just don't nerf it more. I, I really don't like nerfing more. Hütir and Aelidia at uh, 5 also makes sense, but I... To be honest, they were not a problem of jackpot and hidden cash. They were like benefiting from all of other changes. Uh, because this card was played like for the last half a year. It wasn't the problematic card, it wasn't the reason why uh, Syndicate got better. Prince Willem at 1 is very juicy, I like this change. I previously, I think like 2 seasons ago, I voted for it and I'm actually happy that it's there. Uh, there are some decks that actually can play Prince Willem, uh, but those has to be cards that don't care about when they play gold, they just want to win. Usually it's uh, good in card decks like monsters. And those cannot be like combo decks, so probably you won't play it in like a Skelliga. But maybe you can play it in like an R. Uh, maybe with like Revenants to kill them instantly as well. Maybe in Nilfgaard that can play a lot of golds early. Uh, it's interesting. Oh, and of course Kelly, uh, not Kelly. Vi loves it, so Vi is happy, but <laughs> I hope we, I will never see Vi. And Giant Toad nerf, I actually don't like it. I think it was fine at 4 power. Uh, I know that it's a carryover, and it's like a leader ability carryover, but I um, I don't know, I liked it at 4. Then we have uh, Bloodsend. I didn't expect it to, to see it. 
and uh, I'm it's fine. The problem of the leader ability is not provision. It's like the how it works. Blood uh, vampires are amazing when people are using a lot of units quickly early, and you can put bleed on all of them, and you get, can get benefit if you. And if your opponent plays just no unit decks or like a veil base cards, this deck, this deck is bad. It's like this leader ability is just uh, depending on the meta. But well, buffing it make, makes the meta, right? Then we have Inspired Zeal. I don't like increasing provision on it. I don't like that every single NR deck uses Inspired Zeal. It's not very inspiring, so I don't like it. Madame Serenity, wait, provision increase. Makes sense. That card was staple in every single Syndicate decks now, so it kind of makes sense. Novigrad Justice, uh, Novigrad, uh, sorry, not Justice, got Provision uh, nerf. I like it. I voted for it. This card is nuts. It's like, it's almost like 18 coins and a carryover. And carryover of an engine. It's like so many points. This card is just insane. Uh, I, I like the nerf. Lordy Riptide. I think it was fine at 10-8, but it's used in a lot of monster decks, so I think it's fair. But I wouldn't nerf it more. I I, I would I, I like it at 10 power because it uh, supports might and uh, yeah, I think at 9 provision it's fine, but I wouldn't touch it more. Conjurer's Candle, this card used to be like 6 provision, right? This card is very good, but it's no longer that broken so i think it's eight power it might be it would be i think it was fine at seven it was like the perfect spot for this guy so uh, this is a little bit overkill i would say but people were afraid of syndicate like the problem is like no one is playing syndicate syndicate finally got a little bit better and it got nerfed so much that i, I it might be a little bit too much what happened to nilfgaard in first voting dennis kramer bush suggestions you need by an armor equal to the armor uh well, it was good, but it was good like seasons ago, not really now, so... Eh... I mean, fine, it's still playable at 8, but the deck overall got much worse and it's not really seeing play, so I don't know, I would not touch it at all. It's like same with Corrupted Flaminica, it's not like nice cool benefit that finally after like 5 years of Gwent is working and now we are nerfing it. I, I don't know. It's a point slab. It's better than Gord because, because Gord got capped, but you need to do a lot of work for the, those cards and they're finally making bad archetypes work. Like no one is playing beasts and this is like the only reason to play beasts and now you nerf it. Like I don't know. Like you are nerfing a card because you lost against like big points in the end, but it doesn't mean it's the card is broken. I think people are overreacting on or cut, of course, like corrupted Flamnica. I it doesn't need a nerf. Skirmishers, I get it. It was very annoying with Coral. I would leave them like the perfect provision would be four and a half for those cards. And then so I get it. Casino Bouncer, I even voted for them. I'm very happy that only one. Uh, Finner got uh, nerfed because I like that uh, there is like a conditional Finner that is still there and for 4 provision. Because now I will go from the bottom for a reason. Because overall I'm not against 4 provision Finners. Because they make decks more consistent even if they are like staple in every deck. I don't mind to be honest. If they are conditional, and basically if you cannot play them on empty board, and that's it, I'm kind of fine with them. So, because to be honest, it's, it makes game less polarizing. Because if you have inconsistent decks, or not consistent decks, it sometimes comes to my open drew a card I didn't, so I lost. And you feel like your RNG just screwed you. With more consistent decks, this problem is less relevant and it happens less often, which is cool. So I don't mind Finners to be at 4 provision, to be honest. 4 for 8 is like kind of maybe not standard, but like a good deck. Plays 7 or 8 for 4. And you are kind of fine with it. 
now it's if we thinner, so I would say it's fine if they have condition. Casino Bouncer kind of didn't have condition, they would just play it. And for example, I'm very fine with card like Hunting Pack being at 4, pa 4 provision. Because you cannot play this card on empty board, you just can't. And sometimes your opponent will play like doomed unit and then you can play it and you are happy because you can finally fin hunting pack. But then you realize that you have like a lock in your hand and you have to waste it so you can use hunting pack. So I'm also on dry pass of your opponent, you cannot play hunting pack. That's why I'm kind of fine with hunting pack being for provision. Mahang volunteers, same case. I'm fine with them because you need to first generate something on your board. so. You Again, you cannot play it on an empty board, uh, but it's kind of easy to play in round one. Wild Hand Rider, this is a complicated one because you can play it on empty board, so the dominance is actually not existing. But on the other hand, sometimes it can be really screw you in round, like round one. And also, often you want to not play them at all anyway, and you want to get them in round three. So this is a mixed feeling. What I'm trying to say is I, I don't mind some of the thinners being at 4 provision. We just have to be careful with them. Because if we give the deck like 4 provision just with thinners, like we did with Syndicate, we seen what happened. The win rate of the faction went like by like 5% up. Also because of other reasons, but in general like Hidden Cash got like I think 6 provision last uh, balance change. So it's it's like not the only the reasons like you have to remember that if you buff like a bronze card, you kind of buff two cards. And that's what problematic with like thinners, because we uh, voted on both, so we got like four provision extra. If it's one, like now, Casino Bouncer, the deck got two provision, not, not four. You you get I'm, I hope you get what I'm saying. And uh, and let's go to let's go back to other cards. Bear Witcher Quadramater in is interesting at four because it's it's conditional 844, so I was just saying that 844 is kind of standard, and also it has armor, so it's kind of uh, it can be even 944, and people are not crying on Reddit about this card, though it blocks Portal in a way because now you cannot play the seven power like a 14 points provision, 14 points Portal with uh, adepts, but it's actually I think again exaggeration of the problem because if you get like one adept and then this one it's how you actually get more points and instantly because you use imagine you get first the adept then you get a quartermaster you can use quartermaster next turn if your opponent spent like five five provision to kill this you get, you are like up one provision so you are fine if you then can use it on your uh, adept then you get 8 for 4, because the Adept will heal and have already um, uh, armor, so you are actually ahead in points. So I think the problem, portal problem is actually exaggerated. Uh, and then Sorcerer of Blatana, I voted it, and I actually thought that this will be a controversial vote when I showed my votes, but no one really raised the alarm, which is interesting to me, because this card was absolutely nuts a while ago at 5 provision, and now it's gonna be pretty good because it's answer or it can be like 10 points for um, 5 power, 5, pro 5 provision and even get, give you carry over, even can give you like orb or another elf and this card can, can be nuts but I'm actually happy with this being at 5 power because maybe it will push a little bit of a different symbiosis or spellatel deck that gone a little bit and people will uh, a little bit experiment with this card, maybe even in hand buff. And I like this card at 5 power. And I no longer, I don't think at this current power level of Gwen, this card is broken at 5. Then First Dame, I think I talked too much about First Dame in in last three months. And again, I will just say that this card should be five and a half provision. And that's the problem. But don't worry, next season it's gonna be six provision. I can guarantee it. Then Proto Fledger, that's cool because he was not even being played in some of the uh, vampire decks. Is it gonna be played now? Well, probably, but it's not breaking the game. It's like whatever. Lydia at 5 power is actually pretty strong and it buffs Assimilate that it's already 
probably the best uh, deck for um, for Nilfgaard, but I don't know if it's if there is a place for Lydia because Assimilate works a little bit differently now. It's more of a control version with like points lands, and I don't know if Lydia supported it. Like imagine if Lydia had Assimilate on her own, then she would be played. Now I'm not not sure. Imagine combat back at ten. I think 10 is perfect spot for this card. Like, keep it at 10. I'm afraid that it's gonna drop again to 9 provision next season and we're gonna have a problem, or if it's gonna drop to 11 provision, it's not gonna be played at all. 10 is perfect for it. Just leave it at 10. And Water of Broccoli... Water of Broccoli is not being played, but the fun thing is now you can... Wait, let me check because I forgot, actually. Uh, let me... Ah, it's at 5 now. I'm wondering if it's easier or harder to get actually uh, water bro of broccoli from Philavandrel, and it might be actually, well, it is a little bit easier, but because the point like are coming, you know, it was 11-4 and now they are coming, but it, the pass you could like instantly get it with certain buffs now, not really, but it's funny because you can maybe actually play a weird harmony deck with water of broccoli and Philavandrel. Or maybe play just Philavandra for bro Broccoli and just get it? I don't know yet, but it's gonna be fun. I'm afraid it's gonna drop to 9 provision next turn and then you're gonna see a Golden Necker Harmony deck. It's gonna be interesting. I don't know if it's gonna be uh, broken, but it's gonna be definitely interesting. Maybe then you can even play it with uh, Francesca and you go for double golden necker or double broccoli it's gonna be probably pretty powerful so that's it i know it was longer than usually but there are a lot of things to talk about some of the cards i don't like the changes i'm like not a big fan of told i now zika sergeant slave driver and first day i don't mind it but it's gonna be just i cannot even tell you how many posts on reddit i'm gonna see and it's gonna be, again, Nilfgaard in every second game I play, and it's just not inspiring. I, I, there are so many cool Nilfgaard cards that you can change, and you opt for that. Like, oh my god, I'm even gonna... It's not about power level anymore. It's about being fun and do crazy stuff. And if you go, like... To Nilfgaard and look how many cool stuff you can uh, change. You can uh, change Damien, you can play, change Rainfarm, you can change Sandor, you can change Leo, you can change uh, Anna, you can change Shield Art, you can change all of the Witchers, you can change Varit, you can change Swears, you can change Vivienne, you can change whatever, Gilma, you can change uh, Prophet, you can change Urcheon, you can change Tornishelmar, again Witchers. Peter, Van Hermar, Rico, you have so many cool cards that you can change and yet we are stuck in the loop of buffing and nerfing the same stuff. I'm even thinking about just not trying to nerf it again, just so I don't know, it's it's like now Ziga said and it's a 10 power and we just quit the game, I don't know, it's just not inspiring, but again, some of the changes I like. Sorceress, I'm fine. I'm fine with Prince. It's gonna be cool. Crack, and I'm gonna. I can't wait to play it. Mutant. Some are cool. So thank you very much, guys, for watching. I will ma be making video on Sunday with few decks that you can try with those changes, though they are not that inspiring like last time. And I hope you enjoy playing Gwent. And let's make this game great. Vote for John.